Hey guys, Chip here. Today I've got some exciting news on the KidOps front. We have a new version coming out. I'm calling it KidOps Chuck Norris. And uh, thanks to Marco for that. And it's 2.20.51. And we finally got around to giving some really big love to the free version. And let's talk about that real quick. So here I've got the free version uh, loaded up. And as you may recall, you know, we can we can add items on top of stuff. Here's a, an insert that we can add and I can I can use the mouse middle button to scroll it and I can move it on any side I want. And once I'm done with that, I can just click it uh, wherever I want to. And so that's kind of cool. And this is a actual this is a, as you can look in here, you can see we've just added a solidify and I can actually change the segments to something like 24 and you know so I've added that this is part of the design magic collection and by the way I just want to share something with you real quick these little three hearts over here I'm using for a lot of my different add-ons and what I've done is I'm using simple tabs over here and simple tabs is free it's, you can get it on either my blender market or gumroad I just basically for kid ops I just put three hearts there right so you say well how do you put three hearts there well it's not hard at all we just go into uh, miscellaneous symbols you know just do some search on droid assans you know this is it right here right so you can find anything you want you can click on it and then right in here it's going to give you the information and you can just copy this you know you can say you know browser test test page and in here just copy it right here copy control c and then you go back into simple tabs oops and let's say we just say uh, cs pro let's just make that one a star control v there and see and then we just say save that and now we have, you know, that, that's got a little star in it. So that's how I did that. So it makes it easier for me to find stuff. When I'm looking for kid ops, I just look for those three hearts. Uh, that's really not uh, one of the new features. But one of the new features is I right-click on here, I have kid ops. I've got three new things here. Relocate, insert, create, insert. So now free can actually create inserts. Use object orient or use the bottom of the object as the origin. So I can right-click on this. And I can say relocate it, and it'll just move it anywhere I want to. And I can, again, use the scroll button to move it around. And don't forget, also, when you're using KidOps and uh, you add an insert, right, you can also hold the Alt key down and scroll the middle mouse button, and you can rotate it around, too. So, And then you just drop it. By the way, there might be some noise in the background. We've got some construction going on outside, so I apologize if that's bothering you, but uh, not much I can do about it. So I'm, I can right-click on here and say Relocate Insert, and again, I can hold the Alt key down, and I can roll the middle mouse wheel, and I can rotate it around, and if I roll the middle mouse wheel without the Alt key, I can scale it. So that's pretty cool. Okay, now let's talk about uh, the new feature that allows KidOps Free to create inserts. So I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to add a mesh, and... I'll add the Suzanne monkey mesh, and there it is. Control two and shade smooth. And let's move it up a little bit. And then let's go into uh, some of the plastic materials. Actually, let's go into the KitOps uh, free versions of materials. Let's go into KitOps free plastic complaint. And we'll add shiny material to our new object here. And you can see we have uh, a Suzanne set up with a shiny material. Now I'm going to go into orth orthographic view. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on here and I'm going to rotate the head around. Anyway, so once I have this done, I'm going to say control A, and I'm always going to make sure I reset the rotation and scale. So now once I have this done, I can choose any insert place I want. So let's go get this test one. So I've got this test uh, K-Pack, and I can insert this by just right-clicking and say, KidOps, create insert, use object origin, and what's going to happen is it's going to create an insert and a thumbnail and put it there. Now notice that thumbnail's halfway down in the middle of it. And why is that? Well, it always inserts things at the origin point. So if I drop that origin point down there, you see that's the image we're getting. Well, we may not want that. So we may want to insert at the bottom area of our object. So I can right click on this and I can say Kit Ops, create insert, use bottom of object as origin. And this will overwrite an existing insert. Are you sure? And we click on here. Now you can see even the thumbnail has been updated. I'm going to go ahead and create a new file. Don't save. And let's go back into our test. And there's here Suzanne. And as you can see, when we add the insert now, it adds it in the right place. And I can do all those things we talked about earlier. Scale it down, rotate the head, right click on it and say relocate the insert. Right click and say 
re relocate the insert. So you can see it moves all the way around this object, snapping to the normal of the plane that, or the face that it's of the object that is the target object. So anyway, so that's a really cool feature. So let's talk about some other things that you can now do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to remove my kit ops props for this. Which I don't know that I need to, but I'm going to just go ahead and do that anyway because I, I'm not going to use that as a kit ops prop anymore. I'm going to tab into this, and as you can see, I'm going to grab these two faces right here. And I'll go into my materials, and you can see that we have uh, one material. I'm going to add another material. I'm going to assign it, right? So that's another material. Now I'm going to tab out of this, and you'll see that we have two materials on this. But I can come back in here, and let's go into my free kit ops materials. Let's say an emissive material, for instance. And I can click on our object, and with this selected, I can add the material. So now it's actually sticking that material into that slot. And I can go over here, and I can say, let's get me another, let's go into metal, and let's add a material. So, you know, I can adjust materials on the fly now very easily. Now, if you want to make materials, you're going to need Kit Ops Pro for that. But you can actually make inserts now, which works, works pretty good. Also, if you're going to want to do cutters, if you want to have objects that cut into others, then you're going to need to do Kit Ops Pro. But one thing that you can do with this is you can actually create hierarchies. What do I mean by hierarchies? I mean, if you want to create an object that has multiple children, you can save them as an insert using the free version. Now, why is this important? This means you can create full linkages of objects and drop them into your scene. Now, that's something that you cannot do with Asset Manager, the new 3.0 Asset Manager currently. But anyway, long story short is this, that you can do this with KitOps free, uh, you know, today, and it works absolutely great. Plus, there's lots of different KitOps collections out there. We call them K-Packs. And if you go to cw1.me slash kpacks, you're going to see just a, a collection of a number of different ones that are out there. And there's a whole table of contents of all the different versions you can have. There's some pretty interesting ones that might be worth taking a look at. So Charles, he's got some great decal K-Packs. There's some new ones at the very top. Uh, this Parallax Room K-Pack is kind of a really interesting one. And here's another one, Emissive UI Decals Pack. And if you're actually looking for one that you can actually immediately start using that doesn't cost anything, Andrew Everkin Kit Bash K Pack has got some really amazing objects in it. And you can quickly download this as 181. You can start building some amazing models with it right away. And also, there's a box cutter fix so that now you can actually propagate your kit ops uh, using box cutter shapes. Okay, so let's talk about how you can kind of reverse engineer your materials in KitOps Free. Now, first off, KitOps Pro will do this automatically for you. All the stuff we're going to do here, KitOps Pro does automatically, no muss, no fuss. But you can actually create materials now in KitOps Free also, and you can create material inserts. So let's talk about that. I'm going to go into some of this free stuff that I have, like this. KitOps plastic paint. And I'm going to just take this very first one, this Battleship one, and I'm going to hit this Add Insert. Now, when I add material, it just takes the material from this object and puts it in whatever slot is selected. But if I add the insert, it'll actually put the whole insert in there, right? So now I've got this object in here, and I'm going to go in here, and I am going to delete that. I'm going to create a new material, and uh, let's go over here in our material editor, and we will just, you know, we're going to make the base color kind of a red, right? And we'll make it, now we'll make it uh, kind of shiny, so something like this. And I'm going to call this name of this material, I'm going to just call it red shiny. Now, it's important that these names are unique because KitOps is really smart in how it applies materials. And we're going to talk a little bit about that later, but... First, now that we have our red shiny material, really, in order to create a material, I just need to go to whatever K pack I want, right click, and I'm going to say Kit Ops Create Insert Use Object Origin. Just do this. Here's our material. Now I'm going to go File, New, General. I'm going to create a new file. And here's our new file. And I can click on this object here. And I'll go back into our test. And you see we've got this, and I can say add material, and look at that, works perfectly. Now, keep in mind that the, this red shiny uh, needs to be a unique name, as does this word box will need to be unique as well. So here's a really good reason to use KitOps as your main material toolkit for all of your Blender projects. And let me explain it. So if we go into this particular scene right here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to switch to the image editor and I'm going to look at what images I have. So I have this 
three panels. This is an HDRI map, which comes with a world scene. And then I have this concrete patchy. So this is an image, right? And if I go into image and I say resize, it tells me it's a 2K by 2K image, right? So that's a 2K by 2K image, which is takes up a lot of GPU memory. Not a lot, but it takes up a, a, a some, okay? So let's go back into our 3D viewport. Now let's take this object. I'm going to add a material to this. Now, if I was using Blender 3.0 and its asset manager, it basically would do essentially the same thing as going in here and adding this material. And if we look now, we have two CW concrete materials, right? So I can go in here and I can use, you know, I can, that's the second one right there. So you can see it's the same exact material. So now we have two materials that are the same. Now, if I go back in over here on my image editor, you'll see that now I have the exact same material twice. And if I keep using the Blender 3.0 Asset Manager to add materials, it's going to continue to do this over and over. And you're adding more and more of the exact same images to your file. And of course, that takes longer to render, uses up GPU memory and everything. So let's see how KitOps does it. So in here, I'm going to go into KitOps. So you can see this is the CW Concrete 1. I'm going to go in here and I'll go ahead and look. And this is the design. Uh, this is the uh, uh, KitOps material system. Uh, I'll go into their concrete and I'll grab this one. This is the concrete floor and I'll add that material here. And you can see again, it's the exact same material. But if we go over here to the image editor, now we'll look, we still only have one image. So KitOps is really smart about how it applies materials. It will first check to see if that material exists in your scene and it'll use that material. Now you're saying, okay, that's great, but Chip, what if I don't want to use that material? Okay, well, let's, let's look at that as well. Back to a new scene, I'm gonna click over here and let's go ahead and find that concrete material that we were just looking at. And now if I want, if I hover over this, it says control, add unique material instance. So if I hold the control key down and now click, I get the same material. But let's go back over to image editor and let's look. And now we have two versions of our concrete. And so that added a unique one. So if I want to edit this image or whatever, I can do that and not affect the other material. So that's a really important component of KitOps material management and something that now that you can actually create your own materials in the free version and apply them makes sense to start to think of using KitOps as your material management tool set. So that's it for this month's updates. I think there are quite a few of them and I think we've done a lot of really good work. Thank you to Mark Kings North and Jerry Perkins both for uh, all of their help in, in creating all of this. And uh, hope you have a, a good holiday season. And uh, don't forget to uh, check us out on Blender Market and on Gumroad. Thanks for watching. See you online.